Hello and welcome. We've got a new Kentucky Derby top 10 list, PTF and JK. And JK, we had a big Derby prep, the best Derby prep yet this weekend in New Orleans. It was run in the dark. It was run in the rain. But boy, was it uh, an impressive performance as far as I'm concerned from Sierra Leone. Here's a horse that was able to stalk what could be at best described as an even pace, maybe even a slow pace. Hadn't been out since the Remsen really had uh, no trouble in the end doing the business. Track Phantom was game, only was beaten by half a length, but he had the run of the race. It was Sierra Leone who is the horse who gets the money. And I think on a lot of people's top 10 lists, going to be moving up. We'll get to the specifics of our list uh, momentarily. But what did you think of Sierra Leone in the Risen Star? Yeah, definitely deservingly moved up. Um, I'm not sure about our top 10. We'll get to that in a second. Maybe should it be actually a little bit higher. We'll see what the, the speed figure comes back. It's not going to be anything that I think that grabs you and wows you. I think it's going to be a nice figure. Uh, the figure that you want to see from a horse that's shown this type of talent. He's still one of those horses that kind of comes from too far out of it for me to get too excited as, as far as a Kentucky Derby. But I do think that he definitely has uh, cemented himself into the conversation. And I think he's also doing his best work to try to help you with your Remsen point and to prove my Remsen point wrong. <laughs> yes, you're not a bit fan of the Remsen as a historical prep. I say, hey, who cares about historical preps? It's about this group of horses. We've seen Chad Brown with really talented Derby contenders before. Good Magic was second. Zandon was third. They both contested the Bluegrass Stakes as their last stake before the Kentucky Derby. I presume we're going to see the same from Sierra Leone. I thought he looked a little bit more engaged early with the addition of Blinkers, and I thought he ran a terrific race. Very, very interested to see what happens with him next. We'll talk a little bit more about him when we get to that point in the top 10 list that we're about to start. But first, let's give away our contest comment or comment contest win, I should say. Anthony Raza, you uh, get featured on the broadcast today. We're going to have another contest for a commenter at uh, at the end of this video. We'll get to that in due time. Um, maybe we'll even move that idea of the next contest to, uh, to the Rebel Stakes video we're going to do a little bit later. We'll figure that out. But let's get to this top 10 list, JK. Got to remind folks, Eric DeCoster, key member of the In The Money team, he makes this list. We use it as a jumping off point. He's got Mystic Dan in spot number 10, ran that big figure in the Southwest and certainly deserves a spot in the top 10 based on that, I would say. Yeah, Pete, you, you touched the figure. We got to figure out how good that figure actually is, and we won't know until some horses start running back from there. Definitely deserves to be in the top 10. I'm still pretty skeptical about the 10, Mystic Dan. And the other horse that uh, jumped in here, Pete, we can talk about is the 9, Catching Freedom, who was my pick last week in the Risen Star, who I thought ran extremely well considering the way the pace laid out, and a horse that I think is going to be progressing and a horse that I think that could be ignored a little bit moving forward, whether he stays in, uh, in New Orleans or goes back to Oaklawn Park. I'll piggyback as you're talking about catching freedom about a horse who's actually currently just outside the top 10 looking in. But Honor Marie did not lose a lot for me in the Risen Star. This was another horse like catching freedom, closing against the flow in this race, only ended up fifth, but this was a horse that our buddy who clocks down in fairgrounds, Frank McGoey, who you heard on the In The Money Plus show that we did, said look a bit notably short of fitness. So that's one who's going to come on, both him and Catching Freedom, potentially interesting down the line. You don't want to give up on horses just because they don't win every prep. That's just not how this game works. Let's move to number eight and Speakeasy. This is the horse that won the Maiden with a big figure on the Pegasus undercard, same race that Mage won last year. Could we be seeing another Mage in the form of Speakeasy? Big figure, Hall of Fame trainer, Pegasus Day undercard. Those are the three things I need to know to know how talented Speakeasy is. Can't wait to see where he shows up next. Definitely one that could make some noise uh, a la like a always dreaming kind of it feels like they show up on the scene and start winning big races, whether it be at Tampa or South Florida and, and could make some noise on the first Saturday in May. What about Hades in the number seven spot, a, a horse that pulled the big upset at Gulfstream? Yeah, look, I mean, he, look, he beat the champ. We, we, he beat the horse that we had as number one on our list for quite some time. So that definitely takes some consideration. Uh, but I thought that he did it on the front end where it wasn't the most impressive front end performance I've ever seen. We'll see if he can take another step forward. But like I said, I wouldn't be cutting in line to bet this horse to win the Kentucky Derby or to be fair, to win one of those third rounds 
or, or second rounds of, of derby preps. Number six is Track Phantom, made his return to the races, ran better than I think a lot of people thought, at least me, thought he was going to. Uh, Hall of Fame, his stablemate, I thought it worked better than him. Uh, Track Phantom ran a lot better. He got the run of the race, though, on that slowish pace. Uh, it was game to only be beaten half a length, but, but how's he supposed to reverse form with Sierra Leone? I'm not sure. Where are you with Track Phantom at the moment? Uh, I can't wait to bet Track Phantom uh, in 2025. Right. He, he feels like that gun runner type where he's just going to kind of always be there in these races, but he's never going to really be able to be as sharp as some of the competition. But he does have a lot of talent, a style and a trainer in which, you know, let's see him down the road a little bit. He might be pretty good. Uh, He's a little high for me on this list. I understand why he's here. I think he'll continue to kind of slide down. I'm not overly impressed. Like you said, the pace wasn't particularly fast last time. And uh, what was his excuse then? Number five is Timberlake. Depending on when you're watching this video, we may already have our Rebel preview up. You can uh, check that out to get more thoughts on Timberlake. But this is a horse, JK. I know you've always liked. Yep, always liked them. I loved them in the Breeders' Cup betting challenge where uh, all my money is, is still somewhere on a floor in Arcadia. But... Um, I, I think he's extremely talented. This is the type of race he shows up, runs a 104. He's suddenly my derby horse. Now, it's a lot to ask, but it's not uh, impossible with Brad Cox and the talent that we've seen from Timberlake when he was winning uh, the grade one champagne. Number four is Fierceness. This is your two-year-old champion. Had that stinker last time out in the return to the races in the Holy Bull, but we did have a Jay, one of our commenters, point out, look, horses run stinkers and bounce back. Mentioned Mandaloon. To me, though, it's a very different situation when they come out in their first start as a three-year-old and, and run so poorly. I just throw up my hands at this point. He certainly has to be on the top 10 list, I think, at this point, but he's going to be a very hard horse to trust. Yeah, great horses don't typically have those stinkers. It's my only concern. And, and even if he does come back and he kind of bounce, you know, bounces back into form, weird word to use, bounce in the horse racing. But I, I just feel like he's he, he lost a lot for me there. He didn't really have an excuse to run as poorly as he did. He didn't lose a nasty photo. Uh, he was beaten uh, significantly. So we'll see what he does. Maybe I'll get back on the, on the bandwagon, but he's going to have to kind of jump back and wow me, kind of like he did on the first uh, Friday in November. Eric ends up with Sierra Leone at number three. I think there's people out there that would have elevated Sierra Leone, maybe even to number one off this against the flow win in the Risen Star. I'm comfortable more or less with, with where Sierra Leone ends on this list. He certainly feels like he has to be top three at this point. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I have no problem with him being three for sure. Um, I do think he probably deserves to be ahead of two. Just based on what we've seen so far, I do understand they have a a, a common race over the track, but I, I wouldn't have a problem with Sierra Leone being, Leone being second. Number two being Dornick, and Eric keeps Dornick ahead of Sierra Leone because of that head-to-head -head win in the Remsen. For me, though, Sierra Leone ran a lot better than Dornick did in the Remsen. He was against the flow of the track. When you're watching the video uh, replay here, you see that uh, you have to know that the inside was the place you want it to be. It was harder to be outside where Sierra Leone was. Sierra Leone made sort of an inefficient, wild rush up. And, you know, it might look like Dornick is out gaming Sierra Leone. I don't really think that's the case. I think it's a bit of an illusion. I think Sierra Leone had the tougher trip. I like him better than Dornick at this point. But there's no doubt that form got a big boost with Sierra Leone winning this race. And, and Dornick would be somewhere in my top 10 for sure. Yeah, I mean, he deserves to be up there, right? That common race is something you can, you can kind of trust to a certain extent. Let's see what he does when he gets back on the racetrack. And if he does something similar to that Sierra Leone did, then suddenly your Remsen point starting to look pretty good and Doorknock uh, also starting to look like he deserves to be in the top 10. We've got number one still as locked. I'm okay with it. He was supposed to run. He had a little bit of a setback, but he's back on the work tab. Connections, very, very positive. You know, you hear that line sometimes. I remember Ramiro Restrepo saying it last year with Mage. You basically can't have a bad day uh, between January 1st and the Derby if you want to win it. But, you know, I it, everything, every situation is different. That was certainly true for a runner like Mage, who was starting so late, locked, has some good races, Already, he's already run a, a, a 90s figure in a, in, a, in a good race. I like where he is at number one. We're going to see him back in the Fountain of Youth. How bullish are you unlocked at this point? I mean, if he wins the Fountain of Youth and does it the way that he's been progressing figure-wise, he deserves to be number one at this point. Most accomplished, uh, you know, kind of best resume as a two-year-old, winning the Fountain of Youth. We know how productive that Florida prep uh, schedule can be. 
Uh, I think if he can run well on on March third or second, excuse me, I think that he'll definitely to kind of solidify his spot in the top. I know we have a, a horse, JK, that you saw run this weekend that you wanted to mention. One you've uh, heard some scuttlebutt about who who ran a pretty impressive debut. Awful late for maiden winners when you're talking about the Kentucky Derby. But hey, there's other races in the Triple Crown as well. Tell us about this performance you saw this weekend that impressed you. Yeah, Top Connor um, is a horse uh, for um, for Chad Brown that, that Chad had kind of mentioned this summer. Uh, I remember we were there. In, in the morning with, with Ryan Day, the head coach of Ohio State, and, and Chad pointed at this horse and said, this is could be one of my derby horses. And obviously, he got a late start, uh, but winning a mile race first time out, definitely one that you want to keep an eye on. We'll see where he shows up next. We will do a comment contest. Same rules as last time. Whoever contributes the most in our view to the conversation down there in the comments uh, we are going to feature in our Rebel Stakes video. That's going to be coming down the pike fast and furious. So it'll be one of the early commenters. If you want to be featured on one of our shows, please go there and check it out. Make sure that you uh, rate, review, and subscribe in the Money Media content wherever you get it. Obviously, YouTube, that's a wonderful place to start, but also wherever you get your podcasts. If you want more of our act, we go at least twice a week and uh, get to have much longer conversations there. And we would love for you to join us in that format as well. For JK on PTF, we're going to be back very soon with that Rebel Stakes preview. Until then, may you win all your photos.